Hey, everybody. Welcome to Sovereign Community Call, episode number 44. This is Angolandia, head of ecosystem growth with Sovereign, the place to be for your Bitcoin DeFi needs. Uh, we've got some interesting topics to dive into today, including zero, perpetual swaps, uh, our trading competitions, uh, the circle of tokens proposal. Uh, if you happen to know someone from a project that could benefit from collaborating with us, especially um, one of the DeFi applications out there uh, that could have some synergy with Zero Protocol, any kind of business related opportunity, get at me at Englandia in Discord and Twitter, uh, as well as Telegram. You know where to find me. So thanks everyone for joining us here. Thanks for sharing in this mission. So keep yourself muted if you're not talking. If you're trying to talk, please toggle the mute button. Be patient, we'll get to you. Also note that we periodically pause for any questions you might have during the updates. Um, and also, if you're feeling a little bit shy today, feel free to post your questions in the general chat uh, in the Discord. So uh, before we go through the agenda, is anybody here for the first time that wants to say hello? Is there anybody out there? I think that's a Pink Floyd lyric. Okay, well, wait, did somebody speak or is that just hey. my hearing things? Yeah, no, it's me. It's my first time joining your community call. Usually Welcome. I'm asleep at this time, but it's 1 a.m. in Sydney. So tonight I'm awake. So I decided to join the community call. Wow, thank you for, for taking the time at such, uh, you know, an ungodly hour to hear about the uh you know the latest to uh in in sovereign so thanks a lot tucson your name is uh tosun yeah tosun tosun uh yeah, where's that name to be from? here where where's the name tosun from oh uh, tosun is a turkish name it means um big cow big cow yeah. all right man <laughs> uh well because i'm always bullish <laughs> yeah always bullish uh always yeah. looking for the cash cow uh, yeah. Thank you for, for joining us here. Uh, I'm going to um, start with Sacro from the Circle of Tokens. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Edan Yago is unable to make the, the call today, but I figured we'd get, um, we'd get a, a bit of an update regarding uh, the, the, the most recent um, set of suggestions and proposals from the Circle of Tokens. So Sacro, if you're there, um the floor is yours hello everyone this is sacro um yeah as you may know we published our second proposal a few weeks ago and since then most changes were already implemented um, the two big topics were the reduction of xusd lending pool sov rewards and the end of sip 24 liquid suv rewards for stakers we have done some analysis um, on the XUSD lending pool, which can be found in the forum. Um, and basically, we wanted to bring it more in line um, with the updated AMM pool rewards. If you don't know, um, Sovereign uh, reduced the sum of the AMM pool rewards um, a while back. And with this, um, the, the goal is to, to reduce future SUV supply, liquid SUV supply. And um, based on that, the XUSD lending pool was not reduced, so it had pretty significant SUV rewards until recently. And yeah, we, we wanted to bring it more in line with the AMM pools. The XUSD lending pool does not have impermanent loss, and so we thought that um, reduced rewards, reduced SUV rewards, um, may make sense there. In addition, um, we have done some extensive analysis on SIP24 rewards, which can also be found in the forum. There was a forum post that was updated every few weeks or so um, that has shown the future SUV depth uh, based on SIP24 rewards. Um, I kept track of it and due to the implementation of SIP24, the, there was a risk of exponential increasing SUV payouts to stakers. And um, yeah, it, it was just a matter of time until SIP24 had to be canceled. And so it, it was canceled um, some weeks ago. Before the announcement of, of the end of 
SIP24, I believe there was um, a total debt of 1.3 million SOV to stakers over the next three years. And after the announcement was made, um, the stakers went really mad. They, they staked a lot more SOV and the debt skyrocketed. Um, we thought that this would happen. So um, we yeah, um, told everyone in a blog post that if SUV debt skyrocket before SIP24 ends, um, that we may have to remove it quicker. And after that announcement, more than 1 million additional SUV was staked and the total SUV debt reached 2 million SUV within two weeks or so. Um, yeah, now, now it's uh, over, SIP24 is gone, and um, we, may, we may introduce a new SIP24 somewhere in the future with reduced rewards, but right now um, there are no current plans to do so. It's just something that we can might do in the future. We have um, additional plans with regard to the AMM lending pools. Um, nothing is published yet, but there is work being done uh, and we will publish something in the next weeks. It's basically a follow-up um, with regard to our first proposal. Um, we are considering liquid SUV rewards for the AMM pools or partially liquid SUV rewards for the AMM pools. And with that, we are also thinking about further reducing SUV rewards if these rewards will become liquid instantly. So that's it for now for, from the circle of tokens. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Sakura, for the update. Any any questions for Sakura? Okay, I have I have one question. Um, is there is there like an end game that you see, Sakura, regarding the liquidity mining rewards? Do you do you see us still relying on liquidity mining rewards for AMMs, let's say three, four years from now? Um, may, maybe. I think it's very difficult to tell for now. Um, what I know is that we, we must reduce the SOV rewards because in the long term, it's not sustainable. Um, I think we have, gone, we have done very good steps for now. And um, it, all, it all comes down to the SOV price. Um, at some point, um, what we would like to see is an increasing SOV price and with it um, increasing APY for the AMM pools. Um, we, we need to attract liquidity. We need the liquidity in the pools. And if there would be absolutely no rewards, um, I think it, it would just not work um, because um, some, some pools are generating good revenue, especially the BTC XUSD pool um, has increased in volume recently. It, it looks pretty promising, but it's near, not enough already um, to completely remove the SUV rewards. So I think um, we will have these rewards for a long time, um, but hopefully we can reduce them further. Thanks a lot, Sacro. <clears throat> I'm going to move on and um, bring in light with product and, and our governance. Hi, all. Good to be here. Um, on the governance side, it's been relatively quiet in the sovereign bitocracy since the last call. Um, no new SIPs have been uh, proposed uh, or scheduled um, for activation. Um, so nothing to report there. Um, but uh, I definitely invite you all to read through the SIP drafts that have been uh, in the SIPs repo uh, that will eventually uh, go to a vote once they're once they're ready, um, as well as the the SIP drafts and, and other proposals that people have put into the um, bitocracy category on on the sovereign forum. On the product side, uh, I'm happy to share that Zero recently passed a milestone of about 47 RBTC blocked as collateral, which at the current market value is equivalent to about $1 million worth of RBTC. So you could say Zero has $1 million uh, worth of value locked in collateral right now. Uh, or if you prefer thinking in 
stats. That is uh, uh, that is what 4.7 billion sats. 47 billion sats. Yeah, I know 4.7 billion sats. It's a lot of sats. Um, with an outstanding supply of about 323,000 uh, ZUSD. So we're working on a data dashboard that will show even more detailed information than the than the current stats page that's in the zero UI, um, so that we can learn more about how people are using zero, um, including you know how much fee revenue is being generated by the protocol and what exactly people are doing with their ZUSD loans, uh, all just using on-chain data, of course. Um, and uh, we don't have a current uh, ETA for that dashboard uh, yet, but uh, the data has been surfaced and now we're just working on plugging it into the dashboard. So <clears throat> should uh, should have some uh, some updates about that uh, in the near future. Uh, and that's all I have to discuss today. So I'll pass it back to you, Ingemar. Thanks a lot, Light. Uh, I hope we tweet this milestone. I think. Uh, Zero hitting uh, over a million in total value lock is is big. I think that's newsworthy. I think it's an awesome achievement uh, to happen, especially when um, you know it, it it's starting off as a, a gated whitelisted product, you know, and and to hit that much with the number of users currently, active, uh, it is awesome uh, and full of hype. So, any questions for Light while he's here? Yeah, like where are we at on the waitlist? How many invites have sent out? How many are left to be sent out? I don't know uh, if I could say. Um, yeah, I, I I haven't been managing the uh, the invites. I can jump in here, mate. In terms of daily invites, so we uh, you know we started at twenty a day, then up to fifty recently, a hundred, and just this week, um, you know, with with lights go ahead, we've been doing two hundred a day. So. I think the team are announcing on uh, on social today and announcing the community to the communities that we've upped it to uh, 200 a day for a week just to see uh, uh, how we go. Um, I know everybody's hungry to get on board, so uh, good news that we've uh, we've upped the invite threshold. And then Wayne, like, do, do you know how many like uh, people there are still left on the waiting list? Like, are we getting to the end of that, or are there still you know thousands of, of people waiting to get in? I imagine we've still got a while to go. I mean, in total, um, let me have a look. Like, you'll have an idea of this from the message yesterday. We've got about 6,500, 6,300 total signups. That's uh, in totality, um, with 5,200 confirmed. So they've confirmed their email address. Um, I believe a couple of days ago, like you said, we'd invited around uh, 700 in total. And uh, the last two days, we've done another 400. So you can assume around 1,100. Um, so we've still got a way to go. I think we just uh, scale responsibly, make sure um, uh, that the the customer experience is is carries on to be great for everybody, and we 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 scale up invites um, over the over the coming weeks. Awesome, that's great to hear. And then, uh, sorry if I'm taking up time here, but um, do we have an idea of like the conversion of like uh, people's that emails have sent out that have actually like borrowed against zero? Oh, the conversion rate for emails sent out to people who have, uh, yeah, probably the conversion rate of the email sent out to people who have um, taken a loan in the protocol, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's around 20%. So the team's actually putting together a survey um, now to go out to uh, everybody that's um, been sent an invite but hasn't converted uh, to see if we can get some insight around why they haven't. Um, but I believe it's around 20%. Pretty big. So, Thanks. Um, based on the uh, current number of line of uh, lines of credit that have been open, um, which it looks like sixty four lines of credit. So if there have been uh, seven hundred something uh, invites sent out, then that would be a little less than ten percent uh, conversion. Cool, like, thank you. So, um, question from Hooligan in the general chat. Any idea when hardware wallets will be enabled for zero? 
So it, it is possible to use a hardware wallet today if you uh, connect through a compatible Web3 wallet like uh, MetaMask or Frame. Liquality advertises a hardware wallet connection, but I don't think it's working right now. So, so Frame or MetaMask would be your best bet. In terms of having a direct hardware wallet connection without using a, a Web3 wallet um, as your kind of software interface, it's something that's being worked on. Uh, we don't have an ETA right now, but it's, it's, it's in the backlog. It's one of the next things that the developers will be getting to. All right, sounds good. And with that, I'm going to move on to Wayne with adoption. Hey guys, great to be here. A lot of stuff on at the moment, all moving in the right direction though. Um, big project for us is prepping for the brand relaunch and the new website coming out at the end of August. We've seen all the designs for the website, uh, final designs today, given some feedback. Uh, that's going off for coding. While the team creates an abundance of content, uh, highly SEO content uh, for this new web portal. Um, so, and we're also planning around the launch. This is a big deal for us. Um, you know, how do we how do we launch the brand into market and really start getting to the forefront of the uh, conversation? Um, and DeFi uh, is you know Bitcoin's uh, native DeFi platform. Um, so more details will follow, but uh, planning for the end of August for that, which is a big project on the go and will be a big launch. We are working on some key partnerships, uh, co-marketing partnerships. Um, the top three amongst those are RSK has um, offered us co-funding for some marketing campaigns uh, throughout Q3. Uh, we're putting together some plans for that, but it's likely that we will use that budget to promote zero. Um, they've also given us access to their global PR firm and uh, content distribution channels. Uh, only got confirmation yesterday, so planning it out, but that's going to be a, a great network for us, a marketing network. Um, we are working. We're trying to get confirmation from um, uh, B and B Smart Chain for a co-marketing program of work for um, Perps uh, for Perpetual Futures. Just waiting on confirmation there, which will be amazing reach for uh, our Perpetual Futures product. Uh, and we had a chat today uh, with a company called Hacken.io. Vasily, I believe they've done a, a smart contract audit or a security audit on the the Perps feature, and. Uh, they are willing to do um, quite a significant amount of co-marketing for us to their um, to their base, uh, uh, an AMA with Thiago, um, social posts out to about 100,000 users, EDMs to their base. And they even have an idea for a, uh, a liquidity pool campaign that they would like to run in the future, um, which we're modeling it out, but it looks like we pay the AP or APYs or rewards on a two or three month uh, LP campaign and potentially get they're expecting 400% um, ROI in terms of uh, token sales, um, which could be really good. So there's some key partnerships we're working on at the moment. And if anybody in the community, um, you know, these partnerships in, a, in an environment in cryptocurrency and DeFi where performance marketing is quite a tricky game to play because Google will block our ads, Twitter won't let us advertise, Facebook won't let us advertise, quite hard to get through on LinkedIn. These traditional digital channels that uh, you know we usually use for uh, performance marketing, the advertising gets blocked very very quickly. So if anybody in the community has got uh, has contributed to other other DAOs, has any contacts uh, for key partnerships, please do yell out because these can be game changing for us. The investment round is now closed, um, so we have a, a press release going out on that, and we're producing a, uh, a video with some interviews from. Uh, from our investors, um, just to highlight the appetite from VC and traditional tech VC to invest not only in DeFi, but in, in sovereign, especially in a bear market. We're going to push this story pretty hard. Uh, you know, it, it talks very well to the sovereign protocol and the business, the fact that we're getting this level of appetite from traditional tech VC um, during this current market. Uh, so you'll see some promotion go out around that. We had, um, Running for two weeks at the beginning of this month, we had the uh, trading competition on LA Token, which I think had some really significant results as a first um, first go at a trading competition on a centralized exchange to, you know, get some baseline metrics for running this kind of activity uh, as, as an always on layer to drop liquidity and price pressure on the SOV token, 
so some of the headline stats that ran for 14 days we had uh one and a half thousand traders take part 3.5 million in sov traded in 14 days it's about two and a half thousand million per trader we had a home page takeover for a week with a couple million impressions uh social blasts out to three four hundred thousand traders an edm on perpetual futures out to their whole base of eight hundred thousand traders um so some of the some of the results we got on, on platform uh, were great for the cost. It cost us one BTC in SOV um, for a significant amount of volume traded, um, activity, brand exposure. And even though it wasn't our primary objective, we did get uh, quite a few visits to the to the site. We got about 600 sessions, 550 new users. Um, of those new users, about a 22% conversion to perpetuals. Uh, so 120 registrations on perpetuals. We had a bit of a lower conversion post that. Um, but I think all in all for a, the first trial at a, you know, some trading activity, some funded trading activity on a centralized exchange, I think it went, went, uh, went very well. And we'll, we'll try to turn this into a, an always on layer, um, as part of a marketing strategy to focus on the, uh, SOV token. Um, zero as said, we were inviting 200 a day this week. Um, Great results, 6.3,000, 6,300 people have registered, 1 million TVL. Um, we're planning out how to use this RSK spend in Q3, uh, getting some potential advertising on sites like CoinStats, CoinMarketCap, and Telegram ads, things that won't get blocked, just to start creating a baseline of measurement across some paid activity, because Zero has such a broad appeal. Um, I think it's a great product for us to use to start trialing some of this this broader reach activity and move away from just talking to the community over and over again and broaden our achievable market to some degree. Uh, Petrols, the, the trading is now fully open. So, you know, get in there. Um, competition closed yesterday, trading platforms open. We're planning on uh, working with Vasily, planning on running a, a monthly competition, which could win some bespoke sovereign NFTs. Uh, we're building out some video content, um, some written content for Hacker Noon, trying to get into some trading groups, Mandarin trading groups. So we continue to promote uh, PERPS. It's going to be our focus very heavily for the next couple of weeks, especially if we can get BNB on board and get some reach through those guys. Um, and we've got a couple of, uh, we're, we're progressing with the Babelfish incubation. So Dollar Crypto, I can see you on the call. Welcome, mate. And we've had Flametail, uh, who's looking after the, the Babelfish community. Uh, so um, working pretty closely with those guys to see um, how we can uh, work off the back of the upcoming development roadmap, uh, Babelfish, and uh, help in any way we can with uh, marketing strategy and execution. That's me, Englandia. Thanks, Matt. All right. Cheers. Uh, the, so we tried this a while before you came on board, Wayne, but we experimented with Brave ads like very, very, very early on. And... <clears throat> I don't think I don't think it was a smashing success necessarily, but uh, I think during that time uh, our infrastructure what infrastructure wasn't what it was, our onboarding wasn't what it was. Like fast BTC, the liquidity probably wasn't there yet for for something like a Brave Ads type of funnel. So I don't know. I don't doubt that if we tried it again, it it that it wouldn't work. I don't know. It's just something to consider um, because. Part of the mix we're discussing and uh i'm so open to any suggestions because you know as people have worked in kind of crypto marketing before know that there's no templated approach here it's like you would find in other tech industries um we go off what's worked in the past uh you know trying to use content distribution channels and potentially some paid channels that resonate with our kind of key audience cohorts but any learnings anybody has from activity channels content they've used in the past more than open to you know suggestions far away and we'll consider them as part of our, uh, our our planning going forward yeah for sure uh it's almost like every time i open up brave i see i see BitPay, i see cracking gemini i see one inch um so i yeah if, if names like that are taking advantage of it I, uh, it must be for a good reason do we have questions for wait okay so i'm going to hand it over to aurora hey, everyone I'm going to continue then with the development update. In general, for the 
in the past two weeks we moved slower than we're used to in the dev team. That's mostly due to summer holiday season, but also COVID running wild again. So we have several people on sick leave, but still there are news. Most important thing which happened since the last community call is the perp trading competition. It ran for one week and the top three traders were very close together and shared a total price pool of 0 0.5 BTC. But I'm not going into the details of the trading competition here because we have Vasily on the call and I'm sure he's going to share with us the statistics in a bit. So also looking to deploy a few contracts which we finished a while ago and which got reviewed in the meantime. So there's the loan token update waiting to be deployed, which comes with a refactored margin trading, reducing the gas costs drastically. And also a new wrapper proxy for the AMM to allow for the addition of on RBDC pools to the AMM should we add them, um, should we want to add them. Also, brings some general refactoring and gas optimizations to the contract. Currently, we have the bridge update I told you about a couple of times already under final review. Um, under the last review, we figured out that we needed to introduce some changes, but these are now introduced and we're looking forward to a soonish launch of that product as well. Apart from these things, we're working on refactoring of the staking contract, finishing off the zero SDK, and the graph integration with the front end. So these are currently the things which are taking up most of our time. And with that, I'm handing it over to Vasily to share with you the statistics from the PERP competition. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Let me share my screen. Can someone let me know whether you can see? I see it. Thanks. Yep. Okay, so first of all, this was the price movement during the competition. And you can see it's a quite bumpy ride upwards. So I would say it's a difficult environment to win the competition. Because, for instance, if you are leveraged long, you can, could get liquidated on one of these price drops. So I think it wasn't easy. Um, here is a screenshot of the best traders. You can see they made from 225% um, to 170% on the fifth round. And you can also see that they looked quite skilled because they opened quite some positions. So I think you couldn't win this competition by just holding one short or one long. Then in terms of participants, I personally would have expected more. So we got at most about 43 active addresses at the same time that were in, in an open position. And you can see the big spike going up here. Um, on Thursday, we, we canceled the whitelist and made it open for anyone. And that's probably why we got so many more. I don't know what happened with the drop down, maybe the weather was nice on the weekend and people didn't want to trade anymore. So that's the number of traders. Then we had a lot of questions regarding the trading costs and fees. So in terms of slippage, spreads and fees, we are among the, the best in DeFi. So if you compare other DeFi protocols that have perpetuals, uh, which are like classical perpetuals, there you won't find anyone which has the same low slippage spreads and fees with the same liquidity. Then we got the challenge on the gas costs. So I looked at the gas costs of all the trades we had until um, the end of the day before the competition ended. And you can see that on average, the traders paid $3 per trade. Um, there were two instances that were rather high with about $5. 75% of the traders, they paid less than $3.11. 
Now, if you use Bitcoin to pay your fees, the, um, the trading costs are higher by construction because it's a more complex system. We saw that 22% of the trades paid in Bitcoin uh, paid their gas prices in Bitcoin, the rest paid in BNB. So now, now going back to the training costs. So if you have $3 and you have a notional size of $1,000 that brings you to 30 basis points, so 0.3%, an additional 8 basis points of um, trading fee brings you to 0.38%. And you can compare that to other exchanges. For instance, if you take Coinbase, you have 50 basis points. So I think the fees are quite good for being decentralized and permissionless at the moment. Then, um, because I mentioned the $1,000, it's also important to see what are the trade sizes. And what we see is that probably um, incentivized by the competition, which is in relative terms, most trade notions are very, very small. So below $200 approximately in dollar terms. We can also see that we had trades which are relatively big. So someone traded 0 0.4 Bitcoin, someone traded 0 0.3 Bitcoin. So I think that that is nice to see that here too. Then I wanted to know whether that's typical to have such small trade sizes. So I looked at Perpetual Protocol, historical data there, and there we can clearly see that the notions of the trades are above $1,000. So the calculation I made earlier, earlier about the, the fees certainly applies here. So if you have a, a decent average trade size, the gas fees aren't that crazy. I also looked at the leverage. You can see that most traders on our exchange went crazy with the leverage. So some of two went to the max. Um, we have, we are on average higher than 10. On Perpetual Protocol, the highest leverage you can get is 10. Um, we allow higher leverage if the position sizes aren't too large. So pretty crazy leverage here. Uh, if you compare that to Perpetual Protocol, these are that's data from two years. Um, they have leverage, which is on average below 4x. Your zero are the ones that are somehow not uh, determined. Okay, so now what are the next steps? So we only received a few, very few responses on our feedback form we have. Um, what I think we should improve is the onboarding experience. We want to make it easier for people to trade. Currently, I think that's it's not so well made with the bridges because you have different interfaces and it looks a bit, a bit um, not so user-friendly in my view. Then, as Wayne already mentioned, we'll keep the leaderboard and we have some interesting ideas how to enhance it. And I would prefer to surprise you rather than spoil anything here. And then what we'll also do is we'll revisit the trading experience in the front end. So we want to see whether uh, things could look more dynamic. We, we want to make sure the trader has a good experience. And I think we will only add additional perpetuals once we have a better user adoption, once we have more active traders on our platform. And that's, that's all I had. I'm happy to take questions. We have one question from the general chat. Uh, Travis Trades asks, did I hear something about working on improving UI for mobile trading for perps trading? So he's just wondering if he heard you right. Uh, we didn't, we want to focus first on the, on the website uh, part. Um, if that is something we should be looking at and is requested from many users, then it's certainly worth doing. But we haven't that on the, on the plan for the near future. Any other questions for Vasily? All right, so we have another question from the chat. Um, for non-technical, oh, it's not a question, it's just a comment. 
for non-technical onboard was difficult would have traded bigger trades and less leverage if not a competition so interesting yeah that makes sense because you with the high level high leverage and small positions you wouldn't lose too many funds but you can win a lot so i think the incentivization was that we incentivized smaller trades with higher leverage because we measured uh, relative PNL because we wanted to have similar chances for big and small fishes. Okay, looks like someone's writing in the chat. Has anybody here participated in the in the trading competition in this call that wants to say a couple things about it? Uh, Frank was participating and doing quite well for the first few days. It's a shame that you couldn't hold it up till the end. I, w I want to take uh, Debo's question or comment, but it, gotcha. Yeah, he said um, different strategy for a competition than if he were, uh, you know, trading on his own. Okay, uh, just really curious. Has anybody here, uh, anybody else participated in the in the trading competition? I, I'd be really curious to, to hear uh, what you think. And don't be shy. Feel free to unmute yourself. It, you know, it's a permissionless uh, <laughs> forum for a permissionless protocol. Hey, um, I also participated and I really enjoyed it. Um, I think the product is great. Um, it worked really good. I was also pretty profitable at the beginning. <laughs> and um, it was a bit annoying. I, I had two or three uh, transactions which did not work. But overall, um, slippage, it was really good. It was a really good trading experience. So yeah, I enjoyed it. And I think... It has a lot of potential for the future. Thanks a lot, sir. Uh, okay, so with that, uh, I'm going to move on to um, business development updates. So we do have one bounty, the, the, the contract governance dashboard, which is still in review. Um, it has passed two out of three checks. Uh, so we're just waiting on the final check. And uh, just this week, uh, we managed to um, get an integration of Sovereign uh, live and running in a very popular um, wallet app called CoinHub. It has a few hundred thousand users in, in the mostly in the in the Asian market and has incorporated a ton of different chains. So they recently, uh integrated rsk and as, as well as uh sovereign so from the coin hub app you're able to look for sovereign you click sovereign it it takes you to the sovereign website and automatically connects your wallet uh like metamask style uh to the app and from there you can you can begin using it uh, through your coin hub wallet so um we haven't really announced it yet um because there's just some final uh, additions and tweaks that I want to be added, such as listing SOV by default, uh, as well as XUSD, because those are two of the main, you know, two of the main assets uh, in, in the system. So being able to, to see that uh, when you plug in, I think would be extremely helpful and convenient to users. They've, uh, they've been really, really uh, awesome and cooperative. So shout outs to, to CoinHub. Feel free to check it out yourself, play with it. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, it's a pretty nifty um, Swiss army knife of a wallet, seeing how many chains and dApps are integrated there. So I think pretty soon we'll have uh, an announcement uh, around that, uh, which you can look forward to. So you heard it here first. That's why, that's why you come to these uh, community calls, because you, you get the inside scoops. Uh, so with that, I'm going to open the floor to questions from, uh, from, uh, anyone about any topic discussed in this call. We have, <clears throat> we have about 15 minutes left. So I, I'd love to hear your general thoughts, your feedback, your theories, your questions, speculations on the market. It's a pretty open floor. Hey, um, uh, this is Elvik. Hey, Lord Elvik. 
I did make it. I apologize for being late, so I missed a bunch of the great content. Um, I did. I posted in the community chat on this channel that link to the Loomis Gillibrand uh, bill, and I'm soliciting the community for involvement in a response from the community. I think I think the voice of um, sovereign communities is important in bills that could shape global uh, treatment of cryptocurrencies. For so, if anyone in this group uh, is interested in trying to come together and have a response. I'm going to submit one myself. I'm part of the Digital Chamber of Commerce, but I, I believe the voice of one person should not represent, you know, billions of people. <laughs> awesome, man. I'm For those who haven't been briefed yet, can can you brief us on, you know, the recent Gillibrand bill and maybe um, introduce yourself and, and what your role is around that? Yeah, no, I, uh, certainly I apologize for being so abrupt. Um, 100%. So uh, I am involved. I, I, I've done payments for decades, innovation, et cetera, um, and kind of sidestepped my way into a couple of regulatory um, interfaces, one in Europe with the Payments Association and one here in the United States sponsored by my company uh, with the Digital Chamber of Commerce. They're um, essentially a community or a trade association, in this case, crypto. Um, interfacing with White House staffers and, and folks writing the bills that go to the Hill and trying to educate them. So we had submitted, worked with uh, actually the RSK team in, in Englandia uh, on an educational piece that was well received on proof of work and, um, you know, the sort of the, the myth busting of that. Well, recently the Loomis and Gillibrand bill has been introduced. It's a sweeping legislation that covers everything from stable coins to DAOs. Uh, tax treatment uh, for U.S. I know not everyone really cares about that necessarily, um, but it is extremely broad and it is likely to go back to revision in January. So the authors, not the senators themselves, but the people that write the material that they submit, uh, were in uh, interfaced with the digital chamber and have uh, asked uh, crypto communities uh, to really take a look at what they've written and see how it can be made better. So it's an open invitation to collaborate with the people that are writing uh, the words that are getting signed into law. Uh, a couple short call outs. One is that the CFTC is definitely getting proposed as a commodity um, a regula regulator. And this is huge because if the CFTC takes over Bitcoin and Gensler has already agreed that's a commodity, then that gives the uh, framework for sovereign wealth funds to actually contribute to Bitcoin globally, inclusive of the U.S. dollar framework. So that's a really huge component. Um, the other one is stable coins, which which are, you know, we have it in sovereign. So <clears throat> there are portions of this bill that I believe are critical for global treatment of this stuff. And it affects the value of SOV. It affects the value of, you know, everything we're building, at least in terms of its ability to engage formally with, you know, the sovereign states or the, the nation states. So um, I think it's important. Obviously, I have energy around this um, and I'm just trying to make sure the community gets a voice. Thanks a lot, uh, sir. Can you repeat again uh, where uh, they can find this thread? Um. Yeah, so I've, I've posted in general chat and I've posted here in the community chat. I'm not sure <clears throat> general chat chat in, in Sovereign and I've posted here on the community channel chat uh, the link to the bill. Nice. And if you go to that text, it'll give you everything from a summary overview into uh, the body itself. And if people just want to focus on stable coins and CFTC or whatever you want to focus on, um, you know, like I said, I'll, I'll be responding on my lonesome if I don't have other input, but I'd love to be able to say, this isn't just my 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 yeah. view, this is the view of many people. And I, the, the regulators like that. They like they like to have group input. They feel better about it. Yeah, fantastic. Um, I think this could also be worthy of a, of a forum thread, which I can help you uh, create, you know, so it can have some context and you know, and ask for, for, for feedback. No, that'd be awesome. Uh, glad to, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, happy to put my own thoughts out as a straw man for people to respond to. 
but I definitely don't want to drive the narrative. I want to be, uh, gotcha. I would like to have the community. Yeah. Come back with their, their own thoughts. Cause I'm not perfect. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Thank you very much. All right. We've got a few minutes left. Um, does anyone here want to voice something or have questions about anything, uh, discussed prior on the call? Uh, I have a feedback, not a question, actually. I used to, I, I follow the price from the Sovereign website, the price chart that we have in, uh, in our website. The price chart is now very slow. Like I used to just go to the website, change the price chart to daily, and it will load. But like last four weeks, the price chart doesn't even go to daily. Like the only price chart I can bring up is half an hour and four hour. It doesn't go to one day or three day at all. And I've tried this on uh, Chrome, Safari, and Brave. None of the browsers like go to three days. Like Safari goes to one day. Chrome, four hours is maximum. So the I don't know. It's the trading view. Uh, the problem is from the trading view. Uh, uh, website or from Sovereign web website, but the price chart now doesn't really load the different time frames. Oh, that's qu that's quite interesting. Um, maybe we should have somebody from the product side, I guess, have a look at it. I'm not, I'm not sure which uh, department this would fall in, but thank you for uh, voicing this. And uh, I know you've tried multiple browsers, but have you tried Firefox? Uh, I don't have Firefox, but as I said, Safari, Chrome, and um, um, uh, Brave on a Mac. Um, I can speak to this um, a, a little bit. Um, that's why I'm, I'm yeah, um, we're aware that the price has been loading slower, and, and I apologize for that. I know it's very inconvenient. Um, and we are working on optimizing the, the back end to um, get the performance much better. Um, we're in the process of moving the price chart over to pool data from the graph. Um, and this should fix the problem. And it will be, we're just in the final stages of testing it before before it goes live. Um, but we are aware of the issue and we are working on fixing it. And yeah, it shouldn't be too much longer and, and, until the performance is much better on the chart. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot, Betsy, for addressing. Any final questions before we wrap up today's community call? I just have some general questions. Like, you know, when Wayne was giving the updates on um, like the rebranding and the website, like we've been working on that for like a long time now. Um, and I, I guess I'm curious, like maybe kind of what's been going on behind the scenes, who's still working on it or who is not working on it. Um, you know, that update only I think applies to the website and not the DAP. Um, maybe just like more clarity on that. Cause you know, Every community call we have an update on it, kind of. Yeah, sure, sure thing, man. Um, I've been working on it for two months since I've been here, um, taking over the project. I think between me and Fine Line, we've streamlined the absolute hell out of it. So we found a light at the end of the tunnel. Probably was going on for far too long. Brand guidelines are now signed off. So I'd say <clears throat> I need to chat with Yago, but at uh, the next community call, I'd love to present those. So brand book, brand Bible, all but done. And I'd like to present that to you guys. We have put a project plan in with uh, the agency that was, you know, taking some time to deliver this. And we have ramped up the pace to the degree, to the point where myself and Fine Line today have seen pretty much all the UX designs for the entire site against the whole site map. The team now is, uh, the content creation team being led by Bass is following on from those designs and creating all the Keyword research per page for SEO, then writing all the content per page per tile, building out all the videos and the animated content that could be required, um, migrating across all the old blog content, um, reskinning the wiki, reskinning the forum. This is all happening in parallel uh, right now. So um, I understand it's been going on for, for some time. Um, all I can assure you is in the last two months, we have streamline this and we have a light at the end of the tunnel we are ready to present the brand guidelines uh, we have seen 
most of the designs for the website, half of them have gone off for coding, and the team is creating the content at a, at a rate of knots. So it is pretty much, uh, in terms of project work, this is our number one priority. I'm not keen for any more delays, I'm not keen to linger, and I'm keen to uh, share some designs and share the brand work with you guys as soon as possible. Cool. And then just a very generalized question here. Um, I mean, do you think that we're satisfied with kind of pattern and and what they've been doing? Or is it more so just like, well, we signed up, let's push this through and just see what happens? Um, I, I'm, I'm satisfied with the, the output. I think the process could have been streamlined a long time ago. I think we've had some process issues, which have caused delays and maybe multiple feedback loops in the past that could have uh, run a lot more efficiently, which... We've closed those gaps now, and we're running a pretty tight ship to get this thing out the door. Pattern in general, um, you know, high-profile brand agency, um, their work looks good. Aesthetically, the website is going to look great. We're building out the content. There, uh, we, we, there, there could have been better processes in place. That's all I'll say, uh, which I hope we have, uh, we've now solved. And as I said, we have a light at the end of the tunnel. Great. Thanks. I'm looking forward to sharing that with you, mate. So let me have a chat to Yago. Just make sure he's happy with everything. He's got no more last minute changes. And then uh, I will uh, endeavor at the next community call to present as much as I can um, to all the community members here. All right. So we're approaching the hour. Uh, so I'm going to close this call. Uh, you guys can feel free to still hang and chit chat. But we're going to close the recording. Uh, I want to thank you guys for joining us. Thanks for helping us fight the good fight and helping us build a world on top of Bitcoin um, and help us spread the word and create more sovereign individuals. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Telegram. Subscribe to uh, the Sovereign YouTube channel. Uh, I promise we'll get the YouTube recordings online again uh, and visit our DAP at Sovereign.app. So uh, take care, everyone, uh, and stay sovereign. Uh, Englandia signing out. Have a good one, everyone.